Welcome back. You're with us on uh, Trading Hour. As promised, let's get that conversation going around the aviation space to find out how, uh, you know, trends are like as we look at FY25. We've got the uh, aviation data for the month of March that's come in just very, very recently. It's uh, showing stable sector trends with the continued recovery in domestic as well as international air passenger traffic. Domestic passenger traffic in the month of March is up by almost 7%. This is on a month-on-month -month basis. Well, it's a 13% jump on a year-on-year -year basis in all of FI24 in the, in the entire year. To discuss these trends and, of course, the outlook going forward, we have with us Kinjal Shah, Vice President and Co-Group Head of Corporate Ratings at ICRA to take some questions. Kinjal, thank you very much for joining in. So let's just start by wrapping up FI24. Uh, which are the most dominant trends that uh, stood out for you? And just purely in terms of, uh, you know, total passenger traffic, where are we vis-a-vis -vis the pre-COVID peak levels? Yeah, uh, so uh, thanks. Uh, so, uh, see, we ended FI24 off with a domestic passenger traffic of 154 million, uh, which is 13% uh, growth on a YY basis. But as regards the pre-COVID levels, we had seen a peak of 141 million, uh, which was in FI20. So, um, opposed that peak, uh, 154 million is the uh, overall peak that we've seen in FI24. So, a significant growth over the uh, pre-COVID levels. Uh, that's on the domestic passenger traffic. Uh, the other trend which we have seen is on the uh, ATF prices. Uh, so, in fact, ATF prices uh, in FI24, they declined by 14% on a YY basis, but they remained higher by around 58% compared to the FI20 average levels. So, significant uh, elevation in the ATF prices compared to the uh, pre-COVID levels. Uh, the third key trend, I think, which we saw is a lot of grounding on the aircrafts in the current year uh, due to engine-related issues. Uh, so, um, overall, our estimate is that uh, for as of March 2024, around 24 to 26 percent of the fleet of the Indian airlines uh, was grounded, uh, which is, again, a sizable capacity decline for the industry uh, because of the engine-related issues with the Pratt & Whitney engines. Uh, absolutely, uh, Kinjal, and you know that that's the most important point because, like you mentioned, that uh, total air traffic is above the pre-COVID peak. In fact, I think if we just do the numbers, 145 versus 154, we're talking six, seven percent, at least seven to eight percent higher than the pre-COVID level. And at the same time, we have this capacity crunch that has crept in because of either the, you know, uh, the insolvency of some carriers, the Pratt and Whitney engine issue, etc. How big is the gap between demand and supply? Any way of quantifying that? Uh, you mentioned that capacity has fallen by 24%. So what's the gap in demand and supply that we are talking about, which will then you know, lead us to the next part of the conversation, uh, the overall average increase in fares that we have seen in, in this year? As a proxy, we're not seeing a significant gap in the demand and supply. What we're seeing is increase in the overall passenger load factors of the airlines. Uh, because of this capacity constant, we've seen that uh, for most of the months in FI 2024, the passenger load factors were uh, in the 90s. Uh, so average passenger load factor has been significantly higher, uh, about 85 to 90 percent in FI 24. That demonstrates the uh, gap in the uh, demand supply that we're talking about. Hmm. Okay, and, and do you have a, a handle on the average increase in fares we saw in FI24? Before we start with our FI25 questions, what's the overall increase in fares? Overall, I think it would be somewhere around 20 to 25 odd percent, but obviously it varies a lot depending on the uh, sector, the uh, time of the travel, etc. But average, if you see the uh, rest, which one tracks as uh, an operational matrix in the uh, aviation industry, the revenue per available seat kilometer, uh, those we would have seen an average increase of around 20 to 25%. Yeah, so I just wanted to you know, clarify and quantify the numbers because we all feel the pinch every time we're booking a flight. Now we know the ICRA numbers kind of you know, give a, a ballpark estimation of 20 to 25% increase. Pretty similar to what I think you know, we feel in our heads as well. But uh, you know, Kinja, let's come, come to FY25 and talk about the trends uh, over here and also market share. Uh, how are you expecting the market share pie to, to sort of be in this year? Will Indigo continue to dominate? I mean, very recently we saw Vistara run into troubles with you know, pilots and rostering, etc. Uh, so just in terms of market share, projections going forward, um, you know, what's, what's your overall call? So I think, uh, again, one will have to look at it because, see, there is a consolidation happening uh, between the uh, Tata Group Airlines in terms of uh, Vistara and Air India. 
and air asia so uh, one has to see that consolidation when does that pan out exactly and then obviously uh, the other uh, clear leader is uh, indigo so there would be uh, uh, these two uh, i mean the tata group and indigo who would continue to uh, dominate the market share of the entire aviation industry hmm. Okay, Kendall. Now let's come to financials because that is of uh, prime importance to us. I mean, uh, a lot of investors were looking at the the listed entities, the stocks as well. Um, how do you describe the financial profiles of uh, the Indian carriers right now, uh, listed or private sector, and uh, sort of what have been the key trends? And also, when you talk about whether it's debt levels, uh, looking at the sustainability of that debt, uh, looking at profitability trends, how do you expect FI twenty five to be for these carriers? All uh, right. So we've said that obviously. One, um, let me just give you the FI twenty four estimate, which will give some uh, idea about how the things have panned out. So uh, because of this significant increase in the demand and the decline in the ATF prices that one uh, witnessed, uh, we are expecting that the loss for the Indian aviation industry would decline uh, sequ uh, sequentially on a YY basis uh, to around thirty to forty billion rupees. Uh, as against our estimates of FI twenty three loss at around one seventy to one seventy five billion rupees, so there would be a sharp decline in the uh, net loss for the Indian aviation industry. Uh, uh, we expect around in FI twenty five uh, the uh, domestic passenger traffic to be uh, witnessing a similar growth of around eight to thirteen percent on a YY basis, and uh, we would again, I mean, assuming that the ATF prices remain range bound and do not materially increase. We expect that the net loss for the industry should be at a similar level of around 32 billion rupees in FY25, uh, because um, of the uh, price increase that we've already seen here. We do not expect the yields to improve significantly further uh, because of the demand supply mismatch uh, that we'll be seeing. So our expectation is that FY25 would also see a similar net loss of 30 to 40 billion rupees as we are expecting for FY24 as well. Now that's assuming, of course, we don't run into an oil shock and then things don't completely go ballistic on the oil and the ATF front. Uh, but you know, working with that assumption of range-bound ATF prices, is there any further headroom to to improve load factors? Are you expecting that? Uh, and if so, you know, which carriers perhaps could could push the envelope? And also, I mean, any resolution in sight on the Pratt and Whitney issues? Just getting more capacity back in the sky. Uh, um, uh, see, on the oil, uh, uh, sorry. Uh, the on COVID, the load factors, yeah. Load factors. So, like I said, I mean, load factors are anyways quite high as of now, around uh, 90% plus. So, I think at least over the near term, we would continue to see the load factors uh, remaining at similar levels. Uh, not, I mean, a material increase on the load factors would not be possible because uh, travel doesn't happen um, uh, uh, consistently across uh, months uh, similarly. So uh, uh, some kind of load factors slowdown will happen during the lean season. Peak season would see a higher increase in the load factors. So uh, overall average load factors would remain at similar levels of around 90% plus. Um, on the Pratt & Whitney, um, I think uh, Pratt & Whitney has uh, seen worldwide issues. I mean, it's not just Indian carriers who have faced the engine uh, issues. So they are actually uh, stuck up with a lot of uh, repairs uh, for these engines. And um, uh, the repairs estimates uh, is, uh, uh, I think, significantly higher as in, in terms of the timeline that uh, the repairs would take is going to be significantly higher. Uh, what we are seeing for the Indian airlines is that they are actually entering into some spot leases uh, for uh, some of the aircraft. And uh, we're seeing a lot of these uh, on-spot leases uh, aircraft being onboarded so that they can uh, use the capacity while the peak demand is there during the uh, peak travel season in the summer. Um, uh, obviously, this will result in an increase in the cost for the airlines because the on-spot leases will anyways be much higher than what they would any pay for the other uh, um, leases. Uh, as also, they would also have to uh, uh, bear the charges of the uh, uh, aircraft on ground. So, uh, parking charges, etc., which is again a cost element for the airlines. Uh, the third thing uh, that is there is that, uh, at least from the public commentary by uh, uh, some of the listed airlines, we heard that uh, Pratt and Whitney is also compensating them uh, for this uh, loss which is happening. Uh, one doesn't really know the quantum of that loss, but to some extent there will be a compensation which is available. Uh, so this will be monitorable as to how and what kind of compensation does Pratt and Whitney provide. Okay, thank you very much uh, for that.